You're listening to This Naked Mind with Annie Gross. Hi, this is Annie Grace, and welcome to This Naked Mind podcast. I'm here with Tom. Hi, Tom. How are you? Hey, I'm doing great. How are you, Annie? So good. So good to see you. Great. So, why don't you sort of do a blast to the past and take us back in your journey to where where did your drinking start? Yeah, gosh, my, my drinking started a long time ago. I was probably 12 or 13 and really got into it in, in high school and, uh, you know, partied a lot. And then in college, it was a mix of prescription pills and, and drinking and just sort of took off from there. So was it like in your home as a kid or how, how did it? Yeah, yeah, it was, it was mostly at friends' houses, you know, uh, the, the classic, you know, doing a sleepover and uh, sneaking some, some booze from, you know, your parents uh, or your friend's parents' uh, liquor cabinet and uh, replacing it with water. And yeah. I'm sure they had a rude awakening the next time they tried to make a cocktail, you know, but uh but my story is not terribly dissimilar from yours. You know, I was a, a corporate executive. I was head of communications for a, a couple of different companies, big companies, and traveling all over the world. And um, Guinness was my drink of choice. And I sort of, you know, convinced myself that I wasn't drinking hard liquor, so it wasn't really a problem. But uh, but I was a daily drinker, and especially on the road, and it started to catch up with me. And uh, in January of 2020, I got diagnosed with a fatty liver. And uh, pre cirrhotic, you know, pre cirrhosis of the liver, um, and uh, and that was that was kind of a wake up call for me to to begin to bring some curiosity to my drinking. You know, my 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 doctor said to me, he said, I never got the sense that you were a heavy drinker, but whatever you're drinking, try and cut it in half. Mm-hmm. And I'm thinking in the back of my mind, man, I'm drinking eight Guinnesses a night you know, and, um, and, and I, I knew it was a problem, but I, I kept drinking and, uh, went with my partner at the time to Nashville and, uh, gosh, the, 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 the Tennessee Titans were in the playoffs and, uh, we wanted to go out and root on the home team, you know, and checked into the Airbnb and took like a 45 minute nap and then went back out on a pub crawl. And, uh, I remember, singing karaoke, which is one of my favorite things, and I'm sure we'll touch upon it plenty during this interview, but uh, singing karaoke, and I couldn't even read the words. I was blacked out on stage and um, wound up in bed for three days solid, couldn't hold anything down, liquids or or food or anything like that, and I was shaking. I was trembling, and um, we had tickets that night um which was a tuesday to go see brandy carlisle at the ryman and i like poured myself into that seat at the mother church and um that performance of hers with the hanseroff twins was an eye-opening experience for me and i i knew in that moment i had to do something different and so on the plane back to boston uh I was Googling alternatives to AA for quitting drinking and it happened upon your book and I downloaded it to my audible and I told my, my partner at the time, I said, I've got to quit drinking. And she said, if, uh, if you quit drinking, I'm going to break up with you because you won't be an interesting person. And that was a big fear of mine too. And, uh, but I listened to the book and I still kept drinking and I, you know, did what the book says, which is to approach your drinking with curiosity and sort of, you know, pay attention to what you're feeling before, during and after you're you're drinking. And on February 10th of 2020, I called it quits. That was it Mm -hmm. for me. I got about a month out in the wild under my belt before the lockdown uh, from the pandemic. And I sang karaoke probably four nights a week. Uh, during that month, I was just, I was absolutely, I was on the circuit and I just realized that like, there was something to it, to performing in not, not having alcohol in my system and, and, and really, you know, having that satisfaction of, I sang really well, you know, and the crowd was into it. And, and uh, it, it was refreshing to me to be able to go to bars and keep alcohol in my house and be around people who were drinking and not have that sort of threaten my sobriety at all. I, I didn't really have FOMO, you know, it was just nice to be in 
those spaces with friends who were doing what they wanted to do while I was doing what I wanted to do, which was live an alcohol-free life. And I remember when the, when the lockdown took place, I thought they were going to co- close liquor stores. And I went out and I got a case of wine and a case of vodka and a case of Prosecco because I knew I wasn't going to drink, but I know my friends do. And I like to entertain <laughs> And, uh, you know, made it made it through the worst part of the pandemic. By the time, you know, vaccines were out and commercially available, I still had about half a case of, of each of those things and never touched them. You know, I was never really tempted. I, I really feel like you could put an ice cold Guinness right in front of me and it wouldn't make a difference to me. So I've got a, a powerful and durable sobriety and um, was was fortunate enough to be able to uh, become a certified coach through your program, and and I coach now and love my life. So. That's amazing. It's so great. And what sort of like that that level of of just conviction and mindset? Like, what do you think were the contributor contributing factors to that? Yeah, I I think the greatest thing that getting alcohol out of your life does for you is give you clarity. And I knew that there was a once in a moment, a once in a lifetime opportunity to do some really deep work and make that permanent. And so I, I, I was journaling a lot. I journal uh, quite a good deal, and and you know kept coming up with these topics that were that were plaguing me. You know the 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 reasons behind why I was drinking, and and you know it, as much work as I put into it, you know combining things and and sort of expanding things out, whatever. I kept coming up with 13 of them. Mm. And I had this hunch that the lockdown would last about six months and six months is about 26 weeks. And I said to myself, well, what if I obsessed on one of each of these 13 topics for two weeks at a time? And that's what I did. And I listened to self-help books and I meditated and I journaled and I stretched thinking about that topic. And I would spend long tracks of expansive time, you know, thinking about that topic and and really trying to put it to rest as much as I could, you know, two failed marriages and my relationship with my parents and with work and, you know, history of violence in my past. And I did enough work on each of those during those two week intervals to sort of at least put them back on the shelf and say, Mm -hmm. this is enough for now. You know, it's not enough in, in in its entirety, but it's enough for now. And at the end of those 26 weeks, I was 85 pounds lighter mm-hmm. and I was happier and healthier than I had ever been. And I had now seven months of sobriety under my belt. I was a changed man, you know, and I was gentler and kinder and, and truly happier. And I found myself smiling less, actually, but I had learned during this period of discovery that that my smiling was it was kind of a trauma response it was a people pleasing attribute but i had a a, an inner peace and an inner smile uh of of really true and genuine happiness i've carried that through to this day and and gosh it's been three and a half years now and uh and it's been such a journey of self-discovery i i think that that's that's that was the gift that being alcohol free brought to me is that clarity to say I can live a different kind of life and I can be genuinely happy doing that. That's that's amazing. And when you were doing these deep dives for these two week periods at a time, were you using any specific like tools or techniques or were you just going, you know, meditating on how is that working? The, the, the technique was obsession. <laughs> it was, <laughs> you know, what can I find out there, you know, in terms of self-help, in terms of meditations, in terms of, of resources that relates to this topic, right? Mm-hmm. And then just consume that and, and consume myself in it and, you know, think obsessively about it while I was on the spin bike and stretching and journaling and meditating and all these things. And I wrote volumes during that, during that, uh, that six month period. I, I became a more prolific writer than I'd ever been in the past. And that was fueled by the clarity from not drinking. Hmm. You know, I, I really feel like it clouds your vision, it clouds your judgment and clouds your creativity to 
express yourself, whether it's it's to others or to yourself, you know, about yourself. Um, and uh, so that there was a real renaissance that was brought about by by putting putting the bottle down. Wow, that's really really incredible. And and what an incredible thing to just like take that opportunity of those 26 weeks and just be like, I just want to come out of this different and to yeah. have the time and dedication to do that. It's just yeah, amazing. It really did. It's powerful. So powerful. So then you come out of lockdown yeah. and, um, and because of this work, you feel really socially unshakable and you are happy to, you know, just go out and no, no problem. Yeah. I, I was nervous at first, but I, I sort of felt like especially once, once everybody was vaccinated, I was like, I got to get back on the horse here, you know, and I got to go out and I got to sing karaoke and I got to, you know, go to bars with friends and parties and, you know, out, outdoor concerts were a thing again. And, and, and that was, that was another thing that was on my list of my favorite things to do, you know, and at the end of 2021, I took myself on a road trip, just me and my dog. And we went all up and down the East coast and, uh, you know, stayed with friends and saw family and whatever, but I also stayed by myself and I went out, you know, by myself, which I really like to do and just met up with people and, and talked to them about my, my story and my journey. And that was, that really solidified it for me that, that, you know, telling that story time and time again, over and over again, really helped drive it home to me that I had really put a lot of work into changing my life and and straightening things out really amazing so i know now you're a certified this take in mind coach but will you talk us through kind of your career progression that got you to to that choice and that just sure absolutely so like i said i was i was head of communications for a software company in cambridge for about five and a half years and uh, during that time i undertook the course of study to become a certified coach for this naked mind and um, I've coached for a long time. I've coached for about 20 years. Um, but what I typically focused on uh, was, was two prongs. One was uh, career transition for mid-career uh, professionals, right? Uh, making meaningful career change out of, you know, whatever it is that, that really fuels you and drives you and, and makes you passionate. And the other is public speaking, right? Uh, engaging the media, doing podcasts, things like that, or being a public speaker on a stage. And how to really, you know, control, command an audience's attention. And so as, as I was approached by, uh, by you and others about this, this program, I was like, this could really be a great third leg of the stool. Because there aren't a lot of coaches that focus on corporate executives, right? And, and yet, corporate culture, as you know, I mean, this is part of your origin story as well. Corporate culture is so steeped in alcohol. It's take a client out for drinks. Let's go out to to drinks to celebrate. Let's let's pop open a, a bottle of champagne to 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 celebrate a, a big client win, and and yet there's this fear that if I stop drinking, I'm not I'm going to lose my edge in the corporate world, and mm -hmm. so I work with a lot of clients on reframing that and really turning that. Uh, that notion around that you're going to lose your edge or you're going to uh, to be held back in your corporate career uh, because you don't drink. Mm -hmm. um, and so I have been coaching on my own for um, just over a year now. I left that job uh, in July of 22. Uh, I am looking to get back into the corporate communications world, but in a very different way. And I feel like my level of engagement you know, we'll, we'll, we'll look different. And I really am, am being very choosy about, you know, where I wind up uh, with, with the new skills that I have. That's amazing. That's really powerful. So what else, like, can you tell us about how, you know, things have been, have been going And I guess, even if somebody was coming and, and saying, okay, like I have these fears, Tom, like I'm afraid yeah. I actually had a cousin who um, she worked for, I won't mention the company, but a big company that everybody knows. And she was very high level. And in addition to being the CEO of this company, this woman who ran the company also owned a winery. Wow. And she told me once, she's like, you know, I read your book. I really stopped drinking except at work functions because she has her own wine. She brings it in. She's so proud. It would just be a problem. Yeah. Like she was really so sure. And I think it's such a, it is such a fear that we'll, 
lose our edge that we won't be able to, you know, network or socialize in the same way. Yeah. Yeah. I, whenever I'm going to a corporate event, the, the thing that I will do about a half hour to an hour before I leave is meditate, right? Mm -hmm. Because people, people respond to confidence and, you know, drinking is one of those, you know, artificial, you know, substitutes for confidence, right? It it loosens you up. The first couple of drinks will, will loosen you up for sure. Meditating has the same effect, right? Being good with people's names has the same effect. Having a story to share, a you know, funny anecdote about a client interaction or a big win uh, or an event you did recently has that same effect. So I always felt, you know, especially since I quit drinking, that preparation for a networking event or a client dinner or, you know, a big company celebration goes just as far as a drink does. And, mm-hmm. and that's also being prepared for what's your drink order, right? That's the first thing my clients and I work on is you walk into a bar, you walk into a corporate event, somebody says, what, what do you have to drink? That, that They're going to ask you that before they ask you your name uh, in, in a lot of cases, right? And so soda water with lime, soda water with lime, soda water with lime just rolls off the, uh, off the tongue and it looks like a cocktail. and <laughs> It's refreshing, you know? And, um, and so there's something psychologically about uh, about having something in your hand, right? It, it's it's a bit of a crutch, and so for me, having a soda water with lime and stories in my head and and my elevator pitch put together, that goes a real long way. And and also knowing when to make a graceful exit. You know, you you hit a certain point at events like that where people just get you know pretty drunk and and they're maybe acting inappropriate or sharing inappropriate stories or whatever make a graceful and very quiet exit and and that for me has been has been you know body armor uh against against these type of events and and i've really i i do a lot of networking events as i mentioned i'm, I'm looking for a career in, in corporate communications but my re-entry back into the corporate world and um and i feel like you know preparation goes goes a very very long way for events like that i love that yeah i echo everything that you just said. And it's, it's so, um, it's so powerful just to have that level of, of preparation and confidence. And mm-hmm. it's so, it, it, it was so interesting to me as I was like, as you were speaking, I was recalling my own corporate, you know, my first few experiences of going into the corporate world, not drinking. And I, I stayed in the corporate world for over a year um, and traveled to all sorts of different parts of the world, all sorts of different countries, not drinking and everyone was a different experience but having that you know preparation what i realized was that the whole the thing that i'd built up in my head it was really just made of air yeah oh there's really nothing to do. there <laughs> you're absolutely right yeah it's it's a phantom it's a story that we tell ourselves uh that that you know t- these terrible things are going to happen if, if somebody finds out god forbid that we don't drink um, and so often they're just born out of insecurities. And, you know, the ACT technique is really, really helpful with this, right? The awareness, clarity, and transformation of, of these, these uh, long-held thoughts and beliefs that sort of guide our everyday, and we're on autopilot. We're just sort of beholden to these, these core beliefs. And if you can reframe those, even ever so slightly, gosh, everything changes. And you realize that it's not coming from anybody else. It's coming from within. The call is coming from inside the house, right? For me, one of the things, the result of that, realizing that it was coming from within, was this level of confidence that yeah. just I just hadn't had naturally yeah. before. And, you know, now I, I mean, I am, I am such an extrovert in certain situations where, especially not, okay, I, I will say, about me, chit chat with people I don't really know about things like sports and the weather. I could do it, but it's not, it's not fun for me, but you get me in a a situation of kind of like-minded people who want to have interesting conversations and I want to stay up all night long and and no alcohol needed. Like I just, I'm so motivated, driven, excited by those things. And I, I did used to think that alcohol was the necessary piece, but now it's like, wow, it's, it's so amazing not to be drinking because those conversations, <laughs> I, I used to have this group of people that are like my intellectual friends, right. And we'd all get together and we chit chat for hours, but it was all over drinks. 
And it was great at first. And we thought it was great the whole time. I started showing up to those conversations without drinking. Yeah. And they everybody got dumb. Yeah. Yeah. They dwindle. Dumb. They dwindle over time, you know, and it's um, or or you wind up with the with the six thousand questions about why you're not drinking and oh I could never do that and and uh, you know I don't have a problem do you think I have a problem and you know the, the, there's a certain point at which you need an exit strategy for, from these type of events and and really just be able to hit the road and, and say this has been a lovely night you know, but one of the things from your book that stands out to me is is like. You know, you, you think about the joy you had as a child, right? The, the pure joy of like going for a swim with friends or riding your bike around the block at sunset, right? You weren't drinking, mm -mm. you know? And and so to, to bring that same sense of childhood joy to adult experiences, you know, free of alcohol has been a goal of mine and, and something that I work on with, with clients a lot. Is, you know, think about some of your happiest memories and pull the alcohol out of it if you can, right? Or, or if there's no alcohol in it at all because it's a childhood memory, all the better, right? But getting together with friends, celebrating achievement, um, you know, celebrating milestones like birthdays and anniversaries and, and, and things like that, it's the celebration itself. It's the coming together of people that brings the magic to that moment. Alcohol is not, not providing much of any magic to it at all. And so stripping that out of those experiences and keeping them, you know, to the time frame that really feels natural and organic seems to be the key. So we've, we've mentioned this a few times, this idea of, and I, I love it. I mean, when I realized that you could just leave <laughs> yep. without telling anybody yeah. and it was actually the more graceful thing to do the more respectful thing to do the easier thing to do I was like oh my gosh this is this is the best yeah. and I think it's just like this little secret of like yeah you just leave and no you don't say goodbye and no nobody notices and it's amazing yeah yeah Annie Grace and the Irish goodbye I love it that's <laughs> that's your next book <laughs> It's so good. And, and I even read something that it was, it's actually more respectful because if, you know, if you think about the state of mind somebody's in, yeah, they're, they're ready to enjoy a few more hours, they're all in it. And then you come up and say goodbye. And they're like, Oh, yeah. like you kind of take them out of the moment. You take them out of the vibe. Oh, should I be going home? Yeah. Oh, I'm going to miss you. Oh, the, like you, you've added kind of a deflation. And honestly, there's never, ever been a time, no matter if it's early in the night, because I'm like, this is just not my people. And I'm always like, right, like my husband, let's sneak out this way. Yeah. And, um, and it was, it, he was like, this is so weird at first, but when we've done it a few times now, it's just supernatural, but there's never been a time where the next morning, somebody was like, huh, where'd you go? Yeah. Much more likely. It's like, do you remember this thing? <laughs> That happened after you left. <laughs> nope, <Right>. I don't. <laughs> and there's a reason for it. So good. That's amazing. Oh, that's great. Well, um, let me ask you kind of two questions to, to finish us up here, which is, first of all, uh, where can people find you if they're interested in learning more about your coaching services? Sure, absolutely. So I'm listed on the This Naked Mind website. I'm also at obsidiancoaching.com. Uh, you can find me on LinkedIn. My last name's a little funny to spell. It's K-E-P-P-E-L-E-R. Thanks to the good folks at Ellis Island for that. Um, <laughs> and uh, I'm, I'm uh, you know, currently taking on new clients. So I'd love to hear from folks. That's great. That's awesome. And then Tom, tell me if you were going to go back in time and, you know, talk to the version of you who was on the plane and, you know, your, your partner at the time was like, yeah, don't stop drinking. You're going to be boring. And, you know, but really feeling like you needed to, to quit, but having so much fear about it. Yeah. Um, what would you tell him about what life is like now? That it's, that it's easier in so many ways, right. Uh, and, and harder in ways that you'll never expect. Right. Mm -hmm. the, 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 the hard parts of, of not drinking are born out of that clarity, you know, because because the, the universe will sort of hand you a whole book full of things that you got to work through. Right. But the easy parts, the social interaction, the work, um, you know, the, the clarity that that I bring to things like relationships and friendships and and work gatherings and, and even work itself work tasks right 
that's the easy part. And, and I just feel like, you know, drinking was for me a constant effort to swim against the current. Mm -hmm. You know, it was a numbing thing that would lead to a lack of clarity in the morning. It was uh, an escape from pain. I've got a lot of uh, sort of chronic pain issues, but it would in aggregate make that pain so much worse, you know? And uh, so I would, I would definitely say to my, my prior self, the easy, the easy parts and the hard parts are not what you'd expect and just be prepared for, you know, to, to bring curiosity to, to a whole new life. I love that. That's great. Thank you so much. Well, thank you so much, Sean, for coming on and, and yeah, sharing your story sure. and some tips with everyone about, you know, just navigating the, the world, especially the corporate world when you're trying to make a change. Yeah, no, no worries. And thank you to you for, for your book, which changed my life and the podcast and the program and the coaching certification. It's been, it's been wonderful to work alongside you with this. That's great. Thank you so much for listening to this episode. If you're ready to see how this naked mind can help you on your personal health and wellness journey and want to learn more, go to this naked mind podcast.com to learn what your next best step is. Again, that's thisnakedmindpodcast.com. We have all of our free resources, programs, social links, and more available for you there. Plus, if you have your own naked life story to share, you can submit it there as well. Until next week, stay curious.